fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the black trunks with white letters and weighs an even 231 pounds, a native of New York now, living and fighting out of Marco Island, Florida. His professional record, an outstanding one of 28 victories, 24 by KO, only two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Cooney! out of the blue corner. He's wearing the white trunks with blue and red trim and weighs an even 253 pounds. He's from Marshall, Texas. This Olympic gold medal champion has a professional record of 64 victories, 60 by knockout, only two defeats in his career. He's the former heavyweight champion of the world. Jerry and George both were giving the rules earlier. I win a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Take this off at all times. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. The closest Jerry Cooney has come to looking at an opponent during the uh, referee's instructions. He almost looked George Foreman in the eye. And an odd crowd in attendance here tonight. Yeah, very I subdued. I don't very think muted. they came to root. I think they came to watch. I, I'm sure they'll get behind whoever the aggressor is in the beginning. And here we go. George immediately going to the crossed arms. Uh, the stance that he's favored throughout his now 20 fight comeback. And there's the big left hook by Jerry Cooney. Not landing that time. Obviously that crossed arm defense is a trademark of George's trainer, 76-year-old Archie Moore, one of the all-time cliche, but really one of the all-time boxing greats. And of course, that crossed arm, George used it effectively, fighting the much shorter opponents that he's faced up to now. Jerry trying to dig for the first time the left hook to the body. That really is his best punch. So Jerry moving to his right also, not something that's very natural to him. But it's movement that's designed by his trainer, Gil Clancy, to confuse George Foreman, to keep him all balanced, and therefore, therefore nullify his power. And you touched the key word there, Alex, balance. Something that uh, Gil Clancy has said that he really wanted to work on with Jerry Quinn. Oh, there's a left from George Foreman. Foreman jab. He has a very heavy and, and strong snapping jab when he wants to throw it and, and lands it, gets it home. Tremendous punch. Jerry Cooney at times also jabbed well, most notably with Larry Holmes. Good left to the body by Cooney, and then he came upstairs and... Mouthpiece is out. We're going to replace the mouthpiece. George Foreman doesn't know what it is yet. Gil Clancy puts Jerry's mouthpiece in. Lost it about 20 seconds ago. And George said, I'm not going to waste the energy walking all the way over to that corner. And replacing the mouthpiece, a new rule. Ordinarily, the fighter would have to fight without the mouthpiece for the remainder of the round. Well, there's that jab of Foreman again getting in. George, we have to say right here, and not just in contrast to Jerry Cooney, George is a little bit quicker than he has been in his 19 fights of his comeback. And that wild amateur is Foreman right to the body. He threw that punch when he was a world champion. Look at, oh, and there's a couple left and a right to the body by George Foreman. That jab lands, but really doesn't do anything, didn't have anything on it. And, and that's really a trademark of Foreman's punches, Alex. You could almost see Jerry Cooney thinking there a moment ago, damn, he was along the ropes. Wait a minute, I am not supposed to be on the ropes. Let me get out of here, and he did. Before Foreman was able to take advantage of it. But again, Jerry in a corner. And that time, Jerry got a little left hook in, and he wobbled Big George. First damage to either fighter done by Cooney with an inside left hook to Foreman's head. The final 10 seconds of the first round, there was a big right to the ribs by George. Baby. Hey, 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 hey
Frank was reading. He's doing okay. He's doing fine. One thing I want you to do, stay off the ropes. Don't wait for him. You hurt him bad, you know. You can't get the scourge hitting him in the belt. Shit, you can't get the scourge hitting him in the belt. You cannot. Take a look at the mouthpiece uh, being knocked out. That jab by George Foreman. Then the second jab behind it. And Jerry Cooney's mouthpiece came out. Action late in the round. Watch the inside left hook by Cooney. Not there. And not there, but there. And that punch moved George Foreman. It didn't really appear to be a loaded punch, but nonetheless, it still wobbled George. George, as he has done throughout his entire comeback, issuing a stool in the corner, standing the entire 60 seconds. George says, it's so boring to sit down. <laughs> Well, George has appeared to be bored through these past 19 prior fights. He just, not in this, he oh, there's in, a good left counter by Cooney. He came in here uh, with a, a much more serious look than he's had in any of his previous 19 fights in his comeback. And he better be serious because he's got millions and millions of dollars at stake here. Well, they both do. But George didn't need this fight to fight Tyson. He was going to get that Tyson fight amazingly enough. He was going to get it anyway. He's risking everything. There's a good right lead by George Foreman. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it definitely scores. Ooh. Oh, and another right by Foreman. And Jerry Cooney has his left hanging a little low. Harry gets it back up. George putting pressure on Cooney, backing him around the ring just by walking in. Jerry so far has not chosen to stand his ground and trade punches. He's been fighting his first there, standing his ground, punching, and then trying to move out of the way. And there is the big roundhouse left, the trademark punch of George Foreman. Ooh, and that low blow by Cooney went undetected by Joe Cortez. Good inside uppercut by Foreman. Oh, oh and look at the left come up and slice the left. And Jerry Cooney's in big trouble. He's ready to go. And there he goes. He was in round five against Spinks. A clubbing right hand by Foreman. Now let's see if he's learned anything about how to survive. Because he's got a minute and eight seconds left. Oh, and that's it. And I don't think, geez, this fight's over. This fight's over. George Foreman blows away Jerry Cooney in the second round. And he came over here to ringside and winked. And Jerry Cooney is not close to getting up. A minute and 57 seconds of the second round. George Foreman makes believers of some. I don't know how many, but made believers of some.